You are tuned in to a special Player Spotlight interview on the CS Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the CS Podcast presented by the NUC NFL Draft Bible, bringing you the names that you need to know first since 2002. Visit NFLDraftBible.com. I'm your guys' host, Chris Shanafel, and joining the show now for a player spotlight interview is 2016 NFL Draft prospect Jacob Adelman, a safety out of Friends University. Thanks for taking some time today, Jay. Can you believe that your collegiate career is all over and uh, here you are now getting ready for an opportunity at the next level? Yep. Yes, sir. And talk about your college experience, Jake. I mean, looking at your past, you actually bounced around to a few different colleges before landing at Friends University. Uh, Coming out of high school, you decided to attend Bakersfield College, which is a JUCO. So you spent your first two years there. And when you were on the field, you seemed to make uh, make plays. But uh, unfortunately, you were only allowed to play in uh, combined nine games in those two seasons, about 50 tackles, 18 pass breakups, 10 tackles for loss, and an interception all in nine games, not bad at all. Um, Once or two years were up there, you then transferred to Southwest Baptist University where you only stayed at uh, for the summer before transferring to Mid-America Nazarene University. Can you tell us what the reasoning is behind all the moving around? Yeah, um, actually I I went to Southwest Baptist University in the summer, and, uh, you know, it was was all right. The the living situation was uh, what ended up turning me away. Uh, after a, a few, or actually after a month, um, I got moved into a dorm from a off-campus apartment, and uh, it just really wasn't what I was expecting. Uh, there was a little bit of culture shock too, being in a small town in Missouri. So uh, after about a month or so, I just decided it wasn't for me. And uh, after they went over their game plan with me and what they wanted to do and how they wanted to use me, I just wasn't really feeling it anymore, so I just turned around, came home, and transferred the the next spring to Mid American Nazarene. And when you transferred to Mid American Nazarene, I see that they wanted you to play wide receiver. Uh, why was that? Seeing as you were a defensive back your two years at uh, Bakersfield. Uh, well, in high school, I think I was coming out of the state and like number fifty in wide receivers. Um, I had a pretty good uh, career at wide receiver and. Most of the coaches wanted me to play that, but my JUCO coach actually saw something different and switched me to safety, which, you know, in the long run ended up being a good idea. But uh, Coach Quinn from Mid-America just, you know, gave me an opportunity to play the position I love and ended up uh, doing pretty good, earned a starting spot within a week there in the spring. And um, money situation, however, just didn't really work out. Um, And that's what led me to leave there and, uh, ended up coming to Friends. Yeah, you went back to playing safety when you made the decision to attend Friends University and play for the Falcons, and, and that was in 2014. Now, you actually took the 2013 season off. Uh, what were some things you were doing with that time off, and uh, did you ever think about hanging up the cleats for good, and how did you stumble upon Friends University? Uh, no, I knew I knew it wasn't over. I mean, uh, I knew uh, taking a year off was uh, – it wasn't the best thing. Uh, I know my game kind of suffered for it. Taking a year off, a year off was kind of a uh, a big deal, really. You know, you'd think after taking a year off, it wouldn't be that big of a difference, but I could definitely tell the difference in my play. So I just worked hard, and you know, in 2014, I got the opportunity to to join Friends University. I actually uh, signed with Missouri Valley uh, in the NAIA, also, and. Uh, I think last second, the day before, I changed my flight and ended up going to Friends University. Hmm. All right, and yeah, here you are. I mean, you spent the last two years at Friends University. You were certainly one of the top defensive backs in the KCAC. Uh, throughout your two years there, I see that you racked up 105 tackles, eight sacks, 20 pass breakups, six interceptions, and two touchdowns. Obviously, some big time numbers. And uh, as much as they do stand out on the stat sheet, the film stands out uh, as well. I mean, they, they say that numbers don't lie. I kind of argue that in some instances. I do think numbers can indeed lie, but uh, film does not, tape does not lie. Uh, and I was pretty impressed with uh, what I've seen from you, uh, what you were able to do there at Friends University over the last two years. How would you describe these last two years at Friends University playing for the Falcons? Uh, it's been great. You know, uh, 
coming to Wichita, it wasn't that big of a difference from my hometown Bakersfield. You know, it's a little, uh, little, little smaller, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. So living, living wise, it wasn't too big of a difference. But uh, other than that, you know, Friends University has been great. Uh, the school's nice. Coaches are great. And the team's great. I mean, we struggled this year, but uh, overall, the last two years have been have been great. And your first year at Friends University, Jake, in 2014, you're able to play with a couple guys that I thought really highly of and uh, how they're not playing professionally somewhere. Not, I mean, it didn't even have to be the NFL. I mean, maybe the CFL or AFL. How they're not playing professionally right now is beyond me. And they're uh, a fellow defensive back, uh, Carlos Cox, and wide receiver, uh, Chris Allen. Um, what was it like to be a part of the same secondary as Carlos? And uh, what was it like preparing for games throughout the week, uh, you know, uh, practicing against a wide receiver such as Chris Allen? Oh, it was fun. Uh, Carlos, he's a great guy and a great, a fantastic athlete. And like you said, you know, I'm I'm su- just as surprised as you that they're not playing for a CFL team or you know even an AFL team at least. But uh, no, Carlos was uh, definitely one of the best playmakers I've ever played with. Um, you know, that guy just seems to find the ball and you know end up in the end zone, even playing as a defensive back. So that was fun. And Chris, man, I mean. He's probably the best receiver I've ever gone against. His routes are crisp. I mean, he might not be the fastest, but he's good size, strong, and uh, just great routes. So going against him every day really uh, stepped up my game. And I know we went back back and forth in practice a lot. We were always, you know, picking each other out, trying to go against each other on one on one, just trying to get each other better. So it was a good it was a good experience playing with them too, and I learned a lot. Once again, he's 2016 NFL draft prospect. Jacob Adelman, safety out of Friends University, joining me here on the CS Podcast presented by the NUC NFL Draft Bible, bringing you the names that you need to know first since 2002. Visit NFLDraftBible.com. And, uh, Jake, I see that you're, you have the ability to play both free safety and strong safety. Uh, what would you say is the biggest difference between uh, playing in the two spots, and uh, do you prefer playing one over the other? Um, I'd say the biggest difference, strong safety, you know, you got to be a little more aggressive. Um, free safety, I think that's my natural position, but I do play strong safety very well. You know, I do like to hit, but I think my cover skills is a free safety and, and, uh, and that sort of just fits me a little better, but, um, playing both, you know, it's, it's fun. You gotta, you gotta be able to play both in the secondary strong safety or free. So, uh, but I think free safety would be my preferred choice uh, going forward. Okay, sounds good. Now, a moment ago you said that uh, Chris Allen was probably the best wide receiver that you've gone up against um, throughout your four years, whether it was uh, when you were back at Bakersfield College or even these last two years at Friends University. Um, looking at opponents that you've played against, who would you say is the best or most impressive player that you've had to go up against uh, opponent-wise? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um I'd say overall, even just, I mean, I didn't even get to go up against him that much, but I remember a couple of plays, he almost uh, <laughs> took me out. It was actually, uh, I think it was Chris Long. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, well, one of the Long brothers, he, uh, he played at Saddleback when I played at BC. And uh, yeah. man, that was a, he was a big boy. And just watching him play, you could tell what it would be like to, to get to the next level and what it takes because he definitely had the work ethic and the skill set to to get there. Whichever uh, long brother it was, I mean, they're obviously playing at the next level at a pretty high level uh, nowadays anyway. So either way, I mean, uh, a pretty solid choice to say the least. Um, And what would you say is the most memorable play that you've made throughout your collegiate career? I mean, looking back five, ten years from now, uh, what will be the first play that comes to mind? Oh, that's easy. The first play that comes to mind, it was uh, we were playing McPherson in 2014. Uh, I remember I had just got pulled from the game. I made a I made a mistake on defense, so I got pulled. And it was my birthday, actually. It was a birthday game. So I was kind of burnt that I got pulled. And I remember went and sat on the bench. And, you know, I had a friend that passed away not too long ago. And uh, his name was Ted Agoo. And I have this bracelet that reminds me of him. And I remember just looking down and praying and talking to him a little bit. And literally probably after, after two minutes of talking with him and praying, the coach turned around and called my name and put me back in. And the very next play was a pick six. So 
it was a pretty pretty cool experience and it was just uh it was just really cool Oh, yeah, especially, I mean, the, the meaning behind it, I mean, yeah, I mean, certainly sounds awesome, uh, seeing as you're, uh, you know, you, you get sent to the bench, and there you are, you're praying, and uh, the next thing you know, you're back out on the field, intercepting the opposing quarterback, returning it for six, it certainly doesn't get much better than that, especially for a defensive back, he is the defensive back out of Friends University, Jacob Adelman joining me here on the CS Podcast, presented by the NUC NFL Draft Bible as he gets set for the 2016 NFL Draft, and switching gears here for a little bit, Jake, I mean, uh, you, you were able to participate in the SCS Bowl a few weeks ago down in Miami, Florida. Uh, what was that whole experience like to play with uh, some of the best small school talent in the country? It was a great experience. Um, you really got to see where your game was at and uh, what I needed to improve on. Uh, for the most part, you know, the biggest difference was just size. The speed of the game was okay to deal with, but just the size of the players. I mean, I, I was probably the smallest defensive back Um so just it was different, you know. I'm usually I'm used to being the biggest defensive back and showing up there being the smallest. I was like, oh wow, I gotta, you know, I gotta get my weight up. I gotta, I gotta get a little bigger. So it was a great experience. Uh, going with my teammate made it a lot easier too. Um, but for the most part, you know, we just had fun and soaked it up, and soaked it all in, and uh, just enjoyed ourselves. Yeah, both you and uh, James Tabor, offensive lineman, who was on the show just a couple weeks ago, uh, made the trip down there to Miami, Florida. And you say you're, you know, one of the smallest guys, probably the smallest defensive back. It's funny because I believe you're six foot, two hundred pounds, correct? Yes, sir. And, and see, I mean, that, that's not even all that small. So it just, I mean, kind of like how you were saying, I mean, it, I mean, just seeing, you know, playing at another level, playing against a Division One talent, and seeing how much bigger these guys are, and then how much bigger the guys are going to be at the next level. Now, being a guy from the NAIA program, I mean, I, I would think that they would have you playing the National Bowl, but instead they did have you uh, play with and against D1 talent. Did that give you uh, any more confidence throughout the practice, uh, throughout the week of practice, and, and in the game itself? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I knew I was going to compete with the best and competing at the highest division. You know, I, I mean, I've always known I can play at that level. Coming out of JUCO, uh, I was recruited by a lot of a lot of top colleges from North Dakota State to Grand Valley State D2. And, you know, I've always known that I can play at that level from coaches being interested in the past. Um, but, I mean, really, it was just uh, – it was just a great experience overall and just seeing where my talent was at and seeing if I can compete with those guys. Now, I know that you were able to record an interception down there in Miami, which uh, I got to think that you couldn't really ask for a much better way to finish your collegiate career than to pick off a Division One quarterback in an all-star game held down in Miami, Florida. It doesn't get much better than that. Now, I do know that no, yeah. a, a number of different NFL teams were represented down there, as well as the CFL, AFL. Um, by any chance, were you able to meet with any scouts while you were down there? Or maybe, if not, you got the impression that you know a, a team or two had their eye on you? Yeah, I got the impression I was getting a couple looks. Uh, I didn't get to talk to any scouts. We had a, we actually had a, a an event scheduled, um, and it got canceled due to the weather there. There was a bunch of flooding, so we actually didn't get to attend the meeting with the agents and the scouts. So that was a big, a big bummer. Um, that was a big portion, you know, of what we we're looking forward to. But uh, no, I haven't had a chance to talk to any of them. Um, I talked to a CFL team. He actually knew, you know, he just actually spoke to us and just told us, you know, he knew where, where we were from and Friends University. A lot of people were asking us, you know, where's Friends University at? But uh, he was from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And, you know, he, I remember when we uh, got done getting measured and he was the last one we saw, he looked at me and read my name as, oh, Friends University. Okay, I know where that's at. So, now I had a feeling they knew, you know, uh, who Friends University was and they kind of had an eye on, on me and my teammate, but going forward, you know, I think it's just the waiting process now and seeing who contacts us. Yeah, exactly, and uh, yeah, I gotta think it was pretty nice to see that somebody at least knew something about Friends University because, like you said, it's not the biggest school; it is an NAIA program, and uh, you know, there you and James Tabor were playing with uh, Division One talent in the FCS Bowl. Again, he is the safety out of Friends University and 2016 NFL Draft prospect Jake Adelman here on the CS Podcast, presented by the NUC NFL Draft prospect. Just a few more questions for you, Jake, and then I'll let you go. Um, any idea when and where your pro day may be at, or or, uh, you know, where you'll be training at until then? 
Uh, I actually haven't figured out where my pro day will be. Uh, I'll be headed back to Kansas around the first week of January, so I'll get back there and start training with our strength and conditioning coach and just prepare for any combines coming up or any pro days. I actually have another all-star game that I'm attending here uh, January, I believe, 10th through the 14th, that Gridiron, uh, I think it's the Gridiron Classic. Or okay, the, yeah. So um, I'll be I'll be attending that and just uh, keep working for that. Um, that's a big opportunity there. I think 31 NFL scouts will be there out of 32 teams. Um, it's a four-day event, so just going to keep working hard until then, and hopefully I can get some opportunities. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, congratulations on that. I, I did not know that. I mean, any opportunity you could get to, you know, I mean, uh, and that's for anybody coming from any school at any level to uh, participate in, in front of scouts. I mean, absolutely grab that. And, uh, again, congratulations on that. Uh, yeah, like you said, a, a pretty big event with a number of different scouts that will be in attendance as well. The College Gridiron Showcase down, uh, I believe, uh, near Dallas, Texas. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, looking again at your pro day, I mean, do you have any goals that you'd like to hit any specific numbers that you have written down anywhere uh for 40 times my going to be my biggest thing you know i got i know i gotta run a good 40 time especially coming from a small school so i you know if i run anything higher than a four or five you know i'm not going to be happy so my main goal right now is trying to run a, a four uh, five flat 40 okay yeah, sounds sounds good. And you know what? I, I know one thing you can do to to improve your forty time, man. Get Carlos Cox on the phone, and uh, you know, do some work with him. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll definitely be doing that this next semester. Oh yeah, I mean that that dude is a speed demon for sure. I, I believe he, uh, you know, at, at one time clocked a high four two four three. I mean, uh, very impressive stuff. Um, and, and final question for you, man: uh, If an NFL general manager was listening to this very interview, why should they want the safety out of Friends University? Take a battle a part of their team. Uh, consistency. You know, every day I'll, I'll bring consistency and I'll always get better day in and day out. Um, I'm a hard worker and, you know, you wouldn't regret drafting me or taking a chance on me. And I believe uh, my skill sets can help a team. And uh, just working hard and the love for the game. You know, I, I play the game because I love it. And, uh, you know, it doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, and you know, I don't think there's any doubt that uh, you know some some guys they they you know want to play at the next level for the money. You said it. You play because you love the game, and kind of just looking at your journey, seeing that you've bounced around at a number of uh, different schools just to play the game, kind of says a lot about you. And uh, again, the journey that you've been on. And uh, with that said, Jake, like I said, that's my final question for you. I really do appreciate your time, and hopefully we can keep in touch. And I'm wishing you all the best as uh, you know we we get closer and closer to the 2016 NFL Draft. I appreciate that.